Welcome to the Contracts for Difference application demonstration video for Allocation Round 6. This video will detail the end-to-end -end process of how to submit a CFD application for AR6 in the EMR portal. The technology type in this demo will be for a solar PV project. The information in this video has been published on the EMR delivery body portal in the CFD Allocation Round 6 section. This is where you can find more information on technology specific requirements and other guidance documents to help support you with any of the other delivery body processes related to the allocation round. Applicants are also advised to review the allocation rules and regulations to familiarize themselves with the process. Once you have logged in to the EMR portal, please select the applications tab. Once selected, Please then create a new application. Please select the company information from the drop down. Please select the technology type from the drop down. Please select the round that your technology type is eligible for. Then select create. The first window you'll be presented with is the General tab. The General tab will cover some of the general requirements of the CFD application. Firstly, the applicant will need to declare if the CFD unit overlaps with any excluded sites to which the temporary exclusion applies. If the applicant selects yes in response to question new A, A new field will appear, asking the applicant to provide a copy of the exemption certificate. If no file is uploaded in this scenario, the application will be rejected. If the applicant selects no to question new A, then please move on to the next question. Technology type in A9 is predetermined when the application is created. The applicant can then move on to the incorporation tab. The incorporation tab is split into four sections, company and applicant details, agent details where applicable, phase details and VAT details. If the application is being created on behalf of a joint venture or an organisation, then the applicant should select no and a new question will appear, which will reveal an upload functionality. If the application is being made on behalf of a company, the applicant should select yes to question A2. The next section to complete is the company details section. This should be auto-populated on the applicant's behalf with the details provided at registration. Question A3G refers to the region in which the company is located. The choices are England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Please note, if the applicant selects Northern Ireland, a new section will appear further down the application form called Agent Details. Questions A3H to A3K are the details that will be used by the Low Carbons Contract Company to contact successful applicants. Specifically, the email address of the preferred contact. Further down, questions A4 to A4B cover the certificate of incorporation upload and any supporting clarification that may need to be provided. Moving on to the CFD unit phase details. Please note that all technologies apply for a CFD have a single phase unless they are offshore wind, fixed bottom only, where they can have a maximum of three phases. If the applicant selects yes to question A11, then the company details will be auto-populated with the information provided in the company's details section of the application form. If no is selected, then the applicant will need to manually populate these fields. 
Moving on to question new D. If the applicant selects yes, the information will be auto-populated. And if the applicant selects no, then they will need to manually enter the information. In practical terms, question A11 refers to the person who will be named on the CFD contract. And question new D refers to the contact that will be receiving the notices of the contract. Moving on to VAT details. If the answer to question 20 is no, then the applicant can move on to the next tab. If the applicant selects yes, they will need to provide a VAT registration number or equivalent and upload a VAT certificate of registration or tax certificate. The applicant can then move on to the CFD unit details tab. The applicant will need to populate the name and address of the CFD unit. If the proposed CFD unit is located offshore or has no address, then the applicant should provide the address of the nearest onshore substation. Questions B2 to B3G require the applicant to provide the Ordnance Survey grid references for the extreme coordinates of each northerly, easterly, southerly and westerly of the site where the CFD unit is located. Question G requires the applicant to upload a map. The map will need to meet the allocation framework definitions of a map, which means a map showing the scale, name, shape of the CFD unit and the longitude and latitude in WG S84 format to three decimal places of the northerly, easterly, southerly and westerly extreme coordinates of the site where the CFD unit is located. The Ordnance Survey grid reference in question B2 of the application should be for the centre of the site where the CFD unit is located. For applicants choosing remote island wind, there is an additional question titled New B10. It is a requirement to upload a schematic diagram demonstrating that the remote island wind condition in Regulation 27A 3D has been met. For applicants choosing floating offshore wind, there are additional questions titled GI, GII and GIII. You will be required to upload two documents here, as specified, and make a declaration that all turbines forming part of the relevant CFD unit are situated in offshore waters of at least 45 metres in depth. These conditions are referenced in the CFD Regulations 2021, Regulation 27A. We will not be demonstrating these technologies on this demo, but please refer to the application guidance document for more examples of floating offshore wind and remote island wind technology walkthroughs. The applicant will then need to populate the phase details of the CFD unit. All technology applications will be for a single phase, apart from offshore wind, which has the option of having two or three phases. If it's two to three phases for offshore wind, the next section will need to be repeated for each phase. However, for demonstration purposes, I will only be demonstrating one phase. Moving on to question B10. The applicant will need to determine whether the CFD unit applying is established or altered capacity. The applicant will then need to input the provisional capacity estimate of the project. For solar PV projects, the capacity estimate must be entered as the AC capacity figure. Applicants will then need to specify the target dates for the proposed CFD unit. One thing to note is that the target commissioning date needs to fall within the delivery years. We have examples of the earliest and latest dates that an applicant can have relating to the relevant delivery year. Next up is the reference price that applies to the CFD unit. This is a fixed field and will be auto-populated for you. Moving on to the cross-subsidy tab. On the cross-subsidy tab, questions C1 to C8 
The applicant will be asked to declare that the CFD unit is not in receipt of the subsidies for the capacity market, the contracts for difference, non-fossil fuel order, or the Scottish Renewables obligation. The applicant will need to complete the relevant declarations in relation to other government subsidies. The delivery body checks the location of the CFD unit details against public data to identify the shape and boundary of the site and to ensure that the CFD unit being applied for is not already in receipt of one of these subsidies. Moving on to the applicable planning consents tab. At this stage, the applicant is required to provide all the planning consents applicable to the proposed CFD project. In the application, the applicant must demonstrate that either the applicable planning consents do not apply or that the applicable planning consents obtained for the relevant works enable the proposed CFD unit to be established or altered, and electricity generated from the proposed CFD unit to be exported to the national transmission system, the distribution system, or a private network. Schedule 5 of the Allocation Framework, Chapter 3 of the Allocation Regulations 2014, as amended, and the ESO application guidance will support applicants on the eligibility criteria for the planning consents, including the requirements on documentary evidence, name, location, megawatt, dates, and technology categories. There are five sections which the applicant can provide data for. Development order, transport works act order, planning permission, section 36, and marine license. Any uploaded documentation in these categories must include a signed and dated planning decision notice. Starting with the development order. This is the development order consent under section 114 of Planning Act. If a development order is one of your applicable planning consents, then this must be provided. Answer yes to question D1 and provide the file in D1A. When providing documentation, this can be uploaded as a single document, or if multiple documents are required, then please upload these contained in a zip file. Should your development order require any clarification, then you can provide this information in question D1B. For example, if the planning consent specifies a technology which is different from the technology that is in the application, evidence must be provided to clarify this. There are also fields D3 to D8, which applicants can complete to assist the delivery body with locating key parts of information from the uploaded documentation. For example, where the OS reference capacity or expiry date can be found, please note that the delivery body will review each uploaded document in its entirety. If the development order is not an applicable planning consent for your project, then please select no and provide the reason as to why it is not required in D2. This is the process which should be followed for each of the sections below. Moving to the next applicable planning consents questions with the Transport and Works Act order in D9. The Transport and Works Act order is only required if the applicant is an offshore wind project located in Welsh waters. The tab will be unselectable if your project does not meet this criterion. The applicant is required to complete the field with a yes or no and then complete the follow-up questions accordingly. With planning permission in D17, Section 36 in D25 and the Marine Licence in D33, applicants should complete the following sections answering yes or no and provide the required information all sections follow the same premise, asking the applicant to complete with a yes or no and provide the applicable signed documentation where required. As a reminder, the delivery body will be performing checks on each section where planning consents have been provided. The Schedule 5 checks will be undertaken. This involves checking the location for the proposed CFD unit. The delivery body will check the capacity in the planning consents is equal to 
or more than the initial installed capacity estimate of the CFD unit specified in the application. The delivery body will check that the date of the application is before the date on which the applicable planning consent expires. The delivery body will also check that the technology of the proposed CFD unit specified in the applicable planning consent appears to be the same as specified in the application. Finally, after all the applicable planning consent documentation has been uploaded, applicants are required to complete the declaration in question D41. This declaration is to confirm that the applicable planning consents provided apply to the CFD unit and cover the works to allow the CFD unit to supply electricity to the transmission, distribution or private wire network. It is important to scroll to the bottom of the page to capture this question. Further support on applicable planning consents required for CFD applications can be found in Chapter 3 of the Allocation Regulations 2014 as amended and the Allocation Framework. The applicant can now move to the Connection Agreements tab. In this section, applicants will be able to provide the Connection Agreement, countersign connection offers with the acceptance document, or private network use agreement documentation applicable to the CFD application. Applicants will be presented with question E1 where applicants are able to confirm the type of connection that will apply to the CFD unit. The possible options are direct, partial and islanded CFD unit. Where a direct connection applies or is to apply to the relevant CFD unit, a copy of the connection agreement applicable to the CFD unit which allows for such connection to the relevant transmission system or distribution system. Where a partial connection applies or is to apply to the relevant CFD unit, the applicant must provide a copy of the connection agreement applicable to the CFD unit. If the owner of the CFD unit is not the owner of the private network, then a copy of the private network use agreement applicable to the CFD unit is required as an addition. Where an islanded CFD unit connection applies or is to apply to the relevant CFD unit, a statement confirming that no direct connection or partial connection currently exists or will exist in the future, and if the applicant is not the operator of the private network, then a copy of the private network use agreement between the applicant and the operator of the private wire network. In this example, the type of connection selected will be direct. Applicants will then be presented with question E2, where a selection must be made as to whether the CFD unit will be transmission or distribution connection. Question E2 is not applicable if the applicant selected islanded CFD unit as no connection to the network will be initiated. The options here are transmission, distribution. If the applicant selects distribution, then the applicant must confirm if the project intends to be license exempt embedded or license connected. The definitions of the two can be found in Schedule 1 of the Allocation Framework. In this example, the transmission connection will be selected. The applicant will then need to provide a copy of the connection agreement or countersigned connection offer between the applicant and the transmission system operator in question field E7 including signed acceptance forms where applicable. When uploading the connection agreement documentation, including the connection offers and the acceptance letters, please ensure that this is signed by both parties and meets the criteria as stated in Schedule 5 of the Allocation Framework. Also, it is important to note that if the project technology type is offshore wind and is transmission connected, then additional questions will appear. The applicant must confirm if single metering or apportioned metering applies to each phase of the project. This question path will only show if the above criteria is met in the application form and further information can be found in the guidance. There are a number of validation checks that the delivery body will perform on this uploaded documentation. In this direct transmission example, some of these are Firstly, the transmission entry capacity specified in the connection agreement is at least 75% of the initial installed capacity estimate of the CFD unit. 
Next is the target commissioning date, specified in the application for when the CFD unit is established or altered as relevant, appears to be on or after the connection date specified in the connection agreement. There is nothing in the connection agreement that indicates that the technology of the CFD unit to which the connection agreement applies is not the same as the CFD unit specified in the application form. It is good practice for applicants to check their documents and information against the Schedule 5 checks in the allocation framework, as these are the actual checks which will be conducted in the qualification assessment period. Like in the applicable planning consents tab, there are additional fields E16 to E29. Dependent on the selection made, in which applicants can complete to assist the delivery body with locating key parts of information from the uploaded documentation. For example, where the megawatt capacity, connection date or technology type can be found, please note that the delivery body will review each uploaded document in its entirety. The application guidance provides a view of the other question paths in the applicable planning consents section and the connection agreement section. For example, if you selected partial and distribution or islanded CFT unit, it is not possible to demo all the scenarios, so please take time to familiarise yourself with the specific application question path. Further support on the connection agreement's eligibility requirements for the CFD application can be found in Chapter 3 of the Allocation Regulations 2014 as amended and in Schedule 5 of the Allocation Framework. Once the applicant has completed the connection agreements tab, the next tab to complete is the CFD Contracts tab. The applicant will need to select the CFD agreement they are planning on entering into in field F1. The options are either generic, private wire, phased single metering, phased apportioned metering or unincorporated joint venture. There are a number of things to note in the CFD contracts tab, starting with phased CFD agreements are only applicable to offshore wind applications. Private wire CFD agreements are only applicable if the applicant has selected partial or islanded CFD connection type in the connection agreements tab. And the unincorporated joint venture CFD agreements are only applicable when the application is an unincorporated joint venture, as stated in the incorporation tab. The system has built in validations to support the applicant. For example, if the applicant was to select an, an unincorporated joint venture CFD agreement where this is not a valid section, then the system will notify the applicant with an error message. In F2, the applicant must then select the standard terms that will be used or if a modification agreement has been agreed with the low carbon contracts company. If the standard terms has been selected in F2, then F3 will appear and the applicant must provide the version number of the standard terms. This version number will be confirmed on the 16th of March when the statutory notices have been published. If the modification agreement option has been selected in F2, then F4 and F5 will appear and the applicant must provide the reference number and the date that the modification agreement was agreed with LCCC. If the applicant is planning to enter a private wire agreement, then an additional question in question F6 must be completed. This involves providing evidence that the applicant is the owner of the private network. A new requirement for AR6 private wire contracts is that the applicant will need to confirm that it will not, via a private network or directly connected cable, supply electricity to an offshore installation as defined in Schedule 1 of the Allocation Framework or a person that supplies electricity via a private network or directly connected cable to an offshore ins installation. The applicant must also provide a signed director's declaration as shown in questions F6 and F7. Further information on this requirement can be found in the allocation framework and the guidance materials. If the capacity in megawatts entered into the CFD unit details tab is equal to or greater than 300 megawatts, or the technology type is floating offshore wind, 
at any capacity, then the applicants are required to provide the supply chain plan certificate they have received from the Secretary of State, and field G1 will appear. As the capacity for this application is below 300 megawatts, then the requirement doesn't show, and the message nothing to fill in currently on this tab is shown. It is mandatory to provide a supply chain plan. If the CFD project meets the requirements, then the supply chain plan should have already been issued by the Secretary of State before the application window opens. Further support on the supply chain plan requirement for CFD applications can be found in Chapter 4 of the Allocation Regulations 2014 as amended. Once the applicant has completed the supply chain plan tab and answer the seven mandatory declarations, a new declaration for AR6 is new H11. This requires all applicants to confirm that they are aware that it is a contractual obligation that the BM unit metered volume and, in the case of a private network generator, the metered volume comprises all output electricity generated by the facility. There are also technology specific declarations that will appear in addition to the mandatory questions. A new declaration for AR6 offshore generating units is that the applicant must demonstrate that a lease or an agreement for lease has been granted by the Crown Estate in respect of the location of the relevant CFD unit as required by Regulation 27.2, the Contracts for Difference Allocation Regulations 2014 as amended. A copy of the lease document or an agreement to lease document by the Crown Estate in respect of the location of the relevant CFD unit must be provided. To note, an exclusivity agreement granted by Crown Estate Scotland through the Innovation and Targeted Oil and Gas Leasing Round does not satisfy Regulation 27.2 of the Contracts for Difference Allocation Regulations 2014, as stated in Schedule 5 of the Allocation Framework. Please see Declaration H12 at the end of the application form. The purpose of the declarations tab is for applicants to confirm the application is for the allocation round and it is not an excluded application and it meets all the requirements of the allocation regulations. Now each tab is completed, it is worth tracking back through each tab to check all the information has now been provided accurately and the mandatory fields have been completed. Applications can be saved at this point and other users from the company account can log into the EMR portal to review the inputs. For example, if a legal representative needs to review the form. If you are happy with the inputs, then please press submit. A box will pop up to check if you want to submit. If there are any mandatory fields that have not been completed, the system will generate a list of invalid fields. If any mandatory fields are not completed, then the application may be subject to a non-qualification outcome. Once all the fields have been completed, please submit. The application will now be submitted. The applicant will be assigned an application ID. At this stage, the application can still be reviewed, printed and withdrawn. To submit a new application, applicants can withdraw the application in the application window and resubmit. It is important to get the application submitted in advance of the submission closing deadline. That brings us to the end of the demonstration. Please refer to the published application guidance document and the common errors document for allocation round 5. This also includes the contracts for difference allocation regulations as amended, the round specific allocation framework and the CFD guide published on the EMR to Delivery Body website. If you have any follow-up questions regarding the application process or any other CFD process, then please contact the CFD team on emr.cfd at nationalgrideso.com or alternatively, you can call us on 01926 655 300. We hope you find this application video useful.